Hey guys, my voice is getting a little bit better, so I'm going to try to make a video. What I want to do today is talk a little bit about our senses from the nervous system. So let me put up this fancy whiteboard so I can talk about senses. Okay, so there are two general types of senses. There are special senses and there are somatic senses. Somatic, if you'll remember, soma means body. And so if soma means body, the somatic senses are throughout the body. They're in a variety of places. Special <clears throat> means that they're in specific locations and only in those locations. Now, each type of sense also has a receptor, which is the nerve that helps to pick it up. So let's talk about some of the different kinds of receptors that you're going to find in different places. We can start with these special senses. They tend to be the ones that we're most familiar with anyway, because they're the ones that relate to mostly the stuff in our heads. All right, so senses we're pretty familiar with typically include taste, taste, and smell. And both taste and smell are attempting to pick up different kinds of chemicals, therefore we call them chemoreceptors. So chemoreceptors include taste and they include smell. So there's certain kind of molecules that when they land on the taste buds, they activate certain kinds of nerves and those nerves run to the brain and they say, oh, this is what you get. And if you get three or four different chemicals, then the brain puts those together and tries to create something out of it. It's really interesting. Taste and smell are pretty related to each other because they happen in the same place. And so the same kind of chemicals that land on your tongue are also in the air and they land in your nose. And so actually when you're tasting, most of the time you're both tasting and smelling, which is kind of cool. And in fact, if you shut your nose and hold it the entire time you're tasting something and then swallow it, Sometimes it's actually very hard to tell what it tastes like, which is also why when you're stuffed up, things taste funny. So I do this trick with little kids. If you cut up pieces of potato and pieces of apple so that the skins aren't on them and they're in small pieces, they look about the same and they have the same amount of crunch. Sometimes I do it with pears because pears are also crunchy. And if they hold their nose, sometimes, as long as it's not too strong a potato, you can't tell the difference between the potato and the apple because you're missing the chemoreceptors in your nose, which are called the olfactory receptors. So I think that's really interesting. So those are one of the special senses. Another important one of the special senses are in your eyes. They allow you to see things. They are photoreceptors. So the photoreceptors are in your eyes. And actually, there's photoreceptors in other places, too, um, for instance, sort of up in your head and stuff like that, but they're not as important. So the key to photoreceptors is they're looking for two different things. They could just be looking for light versus dark, how much energy is getting to them, in which case they're just a basic photoreceptor, and they activate when there's more energy, because the light comes in waves, and then it moves the neuron, and the neuron says, oh, there's light there. But in your eyes, it doesn't just pick up light and dark. It also picks up different wavelengths. So red is a slow wavelength. And blue is a very fast one. And your eye can tell the difference because it has cones. Your eye also has rods, but they also mostly just pick up the same light and dark. And the cones help you to tell the difference between different wavelengths, which makes different colors. So if you're playing a game, of red light, green light, obviously in that case, you'd be yelling it. But if you're in a car looking at red light and green light, you know which one to stop. Unless, of course, you're colorblind, because don't forget, people can be red, green, colorblind, but that's why lights are always in the same order. So the next set of special senses that we're gonna talk about are in your ears. Interestingly enough, the senses in your ears are for a couple different things. So one of them is for hearing, obviously. And then also your sense of balance 
is also in your ears. And both of those are what we would call mechanoreceptors. So what's the deal with mechanoreceptors? That sounds real weird for something that helps you like hear and balance. So we have hearing, we have balance. And the key is that mechano means it's something that moves. So hearing, for instance, is about sound waves coming through and hitting something in your ears. So I'm gonna draw you some cells. In your ears, all the way inside your ears, there are lots of curvy tubes that catch sound. Curvy tubes. And inside of these curvy tubes, there's fluid that gets pushed around. And there's also these neat little cells. They're called hair cells. And they're called hair cells because they have little hairs on them, or at least that's what they look like under a microscope because these are super tiny. And what happens to those hairs is they move when sound waves hit them. The hairs bend over when a sound wave hits them, and the amount that they move triggers the nerve signal, which then tells your ears what you're hearing. And then how far the sound travels through this long tube here can tell you something about its wavelength or its pitch, also its volume. And that's how your ears can figure out sound, which is really cool. So what about balance? How come balance is a special sense? And the answer is because it's also in your ears. So there's even more of these cool little like circle things in your ears. And they're in all different places, but there's this sort of big one that holds a bunch of stuff. And the fluids that are in it can move. So first of all, if you tip your head, the fluids will all shift. So if you tip sideways, the fluid will all go to one side and that will trigger the nerves on that side. And then your body knows that your head is sideways because all the fluid has just gone that way. There's also, in a couple of these spots, little places where there are, let me get my drawing tool back. So here, for instance, there's a spot where there's also these really interesting little crystals. And the crystals are kind of standing here. And the crystals also move when you tilt or when you move forward or back or move faster or slower. And they'll stay standing or they'll fall over or they'll all move to one side versus another one. Those are really neat little things because they are called otoliths. Odo means ear, lith means stone or rock. So you have little rocks in your ears that move when you tilt your head. By the way, this only works because gravity pulls all these things down. If you are in a place with no gravity, or in some cases, places like underwater, where gravity's pull is a little bit different because of the pressure, they don't always move the same way. And you can't tell if you are right side up or upside down, which is kind of crazy. We'll focus on the somatic receptors, which are again, all over your body. Now, in some cases, there is some crossover because there are mechanoreceptors that are somatic because you need to know about movement of your body. How do I know if my arms are up or out to the side or all the way down or if I'm singing YMCA? I don't know. Your mechanoreceptors do because you have mechanoreceptors on all of your joints and tendons. And when it feels something pull, it sends a nerve signal that says, oh, that joint's extended now or that joint's in now. And that's how you can tell. So that tells you all about how your body moves. Another real important somatic receptor are your pain receptors, which are also called noisioreceptors. Pain receptors are also throughout your body. And what they pick up on is something like cell damage. So if you injure a cell, 
then it's able to figure that out. Mechanoreceptors and pain receptors work together in your skin because you need to be able to feel things, but then also feel if they're damaged. There's actually two interesting mechanoreceptors in your skin that I am going to talk about. They are the Merkel discs and the Pacinian corpuscles. So both of these are in your skin. The Merkel discs are up near the top. They are usually just below the epidermis and the dermis. And what happens is, is that when you push on the skin, they move and they trigger nerve receptors. And then you can hear them and they move all over the place. The Pacinian corpuscles are much further down. You have to push real hard before you would injure those and they would move. Finally, there are thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors are also in your skin and they just pick up temperature as you would imagine, but they're also throughout the body. So that is somatic and that is special. All right, one more quick thing. How does your brain deal with all of this? That's important. So every one of these sends a nerve signal and that nerve signal finds its way to your brain. All right, you get my terrible brain drawing. Here's your frontal lobe and then your parietal lobe. And around the back is your occipital lobe and then your temporal lobe. It's a pretty bad brain, huh? Here, I'll add some jiggly things so you know it's a brain. Anyway, the key here is that when all of these things come in, they actually go to one place. That place is right in the middle. And it's the thalamus. The thalamus is like Grand Central Station for your brain. And it picks things up and it knows what to do with them. And it is what we essentially call sensation. All that stuff moves to the brain and you're like, oh wait, I see and feel and hear things. I sense stuff. But then how do you know what that stuff is? Well, then it has to send it to other places like your frontal lobe to figure things out. A lot of it goes to your parietal lobe. That's where all of your touch sensors are. They're all right at the top of your head. Visual things might go to your occipital lobe. Some of the auditory things when you're listening go to your temporal lobe. And that helps your brain figure it out. And once your brain does that and it turns it into something useful, then we call that perception. So I would say sensation is there's something warm and kind of soft and kind of jiggly and that rumbles a little bit down in front of me. And I can feel all those things, but I can put all that together and perceive that I have this adorable chihuahua. And that's the perception part where my brain knows that this is a chihuahua and not other random things that are soft and squishy and preferably something that will not injure me if I pet it. He might go after you, but he likes me. This is Pika. Say hi, Pika. All right, I hope you enjoyed all those census things. Thanks.